Hi there, in the previous video, we've learned how analog signals can be used. In this video, I'm going to do a simple project to control a water tank inside factory I.O. software, through an OPC server. Note that, the project is easy, and its PLC program is small, but during the project, pay attention to different data types that how can be modified for other purposes. In the next video, I will extend the project using a simple PID controller. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, before writing my PLC program, let me design and explain my system inside factory IO software. Now, let me find and add a water tank. Ok, let's ensure the inserted tank is in analog mode. If you remember, if the analog mode is selected, the filling valve can be controlled by a real number from 0 to 10. Also, it has a level meter that gives us a signal from 0 to 10, when the water level is changing between 0 and 300 centimeters. Similarly, at the bottom, there is another valve to discharge the tank, that can be controlled by a real number from 0 to 10. Well, we can add the equipment from the right section, to design a more complex system. Now, I'm going to use just a digital display, to display the water level. Remember, to change the height of any inserted device, press the V key on the keyboard. Note that, digital displays have three modes. For this project, select the integer mode. Because the water tank level is a number between 0 and 300 in centimeter. Well, the water tank system has been designed. In this project, I'm going to use the level meter signal, to calculate the current water level in centimeter, and then display its value on this digital display and also use the first potentiometer on my PLC, to control the filling valve. Now, let's came back to ISP soft. Alright, let me write the PLC program. First, I plan to use M1000. As you know, it's a special bit of memory. If my PLC goes to running mode, it will be on. Well, I want to calculate the water level based on the level meter signal. Note that, in this project, there are different data types, that we must pay attention to them. The level meter signal is a real number, but the digital display work with integer numbers. Remember that, for arithmetic operations, related to integer numbers, were explained before. Now, we must use floating point instructions, when we're working with real numbers. Now, I'm going to use this instruction, to multiply the level meter signal value by 30, to convert it to a number between 0 and 300, which represent the water level. Well, I will connect D0 to the level meter later. Note that, this instruction multiplies real numbers like 5.6 or minus 20.3. So, integer numbers like 30, must be entered with their fraction part which is 0. Well, 
the result of this instruction will be a real number too. I can use a data register to store the result, or define a symbol. Note that, the result is a real number too, but the digital display works with integer numbers. So, I need to use int instruction, to convert the result, to an integer number. Well, this part of my program receives the level meter signal value, and displays the water level on the digital display. Note that, I will connect these addresses to the level meter and digital display later. Ok, let me write a suitable description for the first network. Note that, it's not necessary, but I recommend it especially for real industrial projects, which usually includes many networks. Let's continue, again, let me use M1000 in the second network. Note that, the process of the second network works inversely. PLC receives an integer number from the first potentiometer, and then, it must send an appropriate real number to the filling valve. So, let me use FLT instruction, to convert the first potentiometer value, which is an integer number between 0 and 255, to a real number. Now, let me use this division instruction, which is suitable for real numbers. I'm going to use this formula to generate a real number between 0 and 10, to control the filling valve. Note that, I will connect this address, D10, to the filling valve, through an OPC server. Ok, as I said in the previous video, to enable the first potentiometer, I must activate M1178. Well, this my final program. Let me transfer it to my PLC. Ok, let me run my PLC to test its program. First, let me change the level meter signal value manually. As you know, it's a real number between 0 and 10. If the level meter signal is equal to 10, it means the tank is full, so the water level is 300 centimeters. Note that, I used these addresses to store two real numbers, and these are used to store integer numbers. To see the correct value, I need to select an appropriate item for monitoring data format. Again, let me change this value manually. If the level meter signal is equal to 5, it means the water level is 150 centimeters. Ok, this part of my program works correctly. Let me test the second network. As you can see, I can use the first potentiometer to select an integer number between 0 and 255. In the second network, my PLC converts it to a real number between 0 and 10, which must be sent to the filling valve. Alright, it seems my program works correctly. Now, I want to connect my PLC to factory I.O. software. Like previous videos, let me exit from the online mode, close the COMMGR software, and then, run KEP Server X software. As you can see, inside the KEP Server X software, I've created a channel, and also defined three tags related to these addresses, which have been used inside my PLC program. Note that, during previous videos, I have explained how you can use the KEP Server X software, and also how this table can help us, 
to find appropriate Modbus addresses for each data register like D0, and then use that in KEP Server X software. Now, let's enable the OPC server. Well, the connection quality between my PLC and the OPC server is good. For example, this value can be changed by the first potentiometer. As you know, I must connect this tag to the filling valve. If you remember, I've changed some parameters during the previous test manually, and now, I can see their values here. So, let me restart my PLC to clear all data and back to the initial conditions. Well, on other side, I must connect factory I.O. software to the created OPC server by Kepsiver X software. Note that, I explained the connection settings during previous videos. Well, factory IO software has been connected to OPC server successfully, and also found my desired tags. Now, I can connect the digital display, level meter, and the filling valve to appropriate tags on the OPC server, which are connected to some used addresses in my PLC program. Now, let's test the whole project. Alright, based on my program, I can use the first potentiometer to store a real number from 0 to 10, in D10. I've connected D10, to this tag inside the OPC server, and then to the filling valve. So, the first potentiometer can be used to control the filling valve. Note that, there is a little delay to open the filling valve. Also, these numbers display the current water level. As you know, another important signal in this project, is being generated by the level meter. You can see its value here, and also here. Now, let me close the filling valve. I hope, you have learned how analog signals can be used, especially through the OPC server. In the next video, I will explain PID controllers that work with analog signals. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.